Milwaukee Brewers in 2005, and he defeated the Yankees, a much different club than he faced then. But Ben Sheets knows, and the smart thing that he said, he doesn't want to throw so many off-speed pitches that he doesn't regain his fastball that he at one time threw 96 miles an hour. So we'll see the fastballs, but I think the assortment of pitches really going to help him as well. Yankees will send hard-throwing right-hander Phil Hughes to the mound. He will face a different A's lineup. Lots of changes tonight for Bob Guerin's lineup, and we'll show you those changes when we have lineups and first pitch from the Coliseum right after this. A's Baseball is brought to you by AT&T. Find out what's possible with the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T. Rethink possible. And by Corona. Relax and refresh this May 5th with an ice-cold Corona in line and keep the spirit of Cinco alive. Line of cards have been exchanged and we are set to go. Two of this three-game series, the A's and the Yankees. Chilly night. Game time weather brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Admission is free, and the boardwalk is open this weekend. 53 degrees at game time. And it has cooled off even in the last hour or so. So jackets, caps, beanies, whatever you need tonight to stay warm. There's a slight chance of rain. We don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Yankees lineup for tonight, and here it is. Derek Jeter will lead off, followed by Nick Johnson, Mark Teixeira, Alex Rodriguez, Robinson Cano, Jorge Posada, Curtis Granderson, Randy Wynn in the lineup tonight. He'll be right field, Brett Gardner and left. Nick Swisher not in the lineup tonight. Patterson, Rose, Sweeney in the outfield for the A's. Cruz went off Pennington, Rosales, Barton in the infield, and Kurt Suzuki catches Ben Sheets. First inning, important, as always for any pitcher, and Ben Sheets will try to make it a successful first inning tonight against the Yankees, the very patient New York Yankees. Starts with Derek Jeter. And Jeter on the first pitch, lines one to right center, and that's a hit. Sweeney is able to cut it off. 
So Derek Jeter with a line single. And that's how this ball game gets started. Jeter was 0 for 5 last night. And I say patient, but Derek Jeter getting the first pitch fastball. And yes, he can be patient. See a lot of pitches, but he also knows that Ben Sheets likes the fastball, especially the first pitch of the game. And he did not uh, waste any time. So here's Nick Johnson with Jeter aboard. Johnson, the designated hitter. So we'll start for Johnson. Hitless last night, but he did walk a couple of times. And both times he walked, he came around to score. He's old for his last 12. The final score in last night's game was 7 3. The Yankees won the ball game. So the A's come in with a record of 9 and 6, and they're 6 and 3 at home. The Yankees, on the other hand, are 10 and 3. And away from Yankee Stadium, they're 5 and 2. And they're hot. They've won five in a row. And they've won eight out of their last nine. So they are off to a very good start at 10 and 3. With Mark Ellis going to the disabled list, Adam Rosales, who played great baseball last week, will now be seeing uh, the majority of the time, I would assume, at second base as Mark Ellis takes the time to heal the hamstring. It is the left hamstring, and Mark Ellis placed on the disabled list, said he felt it last night when he swung in his first at bat. And being the left, kind of the, the landing foot. So Landon Powell called from uh, back from AAA, another catcher. Jeter runs on a 3 1 count. Well, that's. I think about that. Mark Ellis went through all the agility drills to get ready, and he was ready to go. But they always say that the speed of the game is different, and first at bat, you feel it. You can't simulate uh, exactly. the actual game. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you can do all the work and practice you want, but uh, just uh, that first swing and landed and twisted a little bit and got it. 3-2 outside with Jeter going and the Yankees got something going here in the first. Uh, ben Sheets is four start. He's faced Seattle, Anaheim, and Baltimore. Picked up a win against the Orioles in his last start. First win since 2008. Mark Teixeira. 162 in the game, six innings. Did not give up a run, three walks, four strikeouts. He threw 97 pitches in the outing against the Orioles. So Eric Patterson takes over. Travis Buck in left field tonight. Travis Buck was in the original lineup. In fact, just a short time before we came on the air, the change was made. Travis Buck out with a strained right oblique. So Buck was scratched, and Eric Patterson, a late addition to the A's lineup. 2 0 to Teixeira. So that's disappointing. Travis Buck, home run last night. Seen better swings lately, but. Is not in the lineup tonight. If we're disappointed, I'm sure he's extremely Absolutely. frustrated. Three and zero oh to Teixeira. Now Ben Chiefs knows with Alex Rodriguez in the on deck circle and Mark Teixeira and look out on this three and zero. Oh. He probably had the green light. We've seen it before. And yeah, there's a strike. What's kind of disconcerting the fact that the fastball is even that strike there was up in the zone. To share a good low ball hitter, but I seem to turn over on a pitch and ground out into a double play. A shot foul. He was sitting on a yeah. fastball 3 1. He got it. That's what you're supposed to do with a 3 1 fastball. Yeah. At 93, and he just was a little bit too quick. Look at that ball was in the second deck. <laughs> Three and two, Jeter at second, Johnson at first. We'll see if they take off. 
See Pennington behind Jeter trying to hold him close. The runners do go, and the pitch is strike three, called throw to third, double play. Just what Ben Sheets needed. Well, with Jeter taking off and the called third strike perfectly thrown by Ben Sheets and Kurt Suzuki knew it and nailed a perfect throw to third base. And you would think with both runners on the move that Kurt Suzuki might be thinking about going to second base. Did he tag him one time? I think he did get him. <laughs> but instead, Kurt with a left-handed hitter had a great shot of Jeter going to third and that was a tremendous double play. Right on the corner is... Tom Halley and the home plate umpire, man, what a perfect pitch. And I think Mark Teixeira knew it, but watch his slide by Derek Jeter. Maybe got him the left forearm before the hand hit the bag. Definitely the ball was there plenty of time. Sheets not quite out of the woods just yet. Got him on the left. Right there. Got him. So one and one to Rodriguez. The big curve inside. Johnson at second base. Rodriguez, the big hit in last night's game. A three run home run. He has 41 career home runs against the Athletics. Three and one. Robinson Cano, another left hand or a left handed hitter, is waiting in the on deck circle. Well, Ben's putting himself in position to where he's able to share three and oh. Now Alex Rodriguez three and one is Cano, an excellent left handed hitter, but he has first base open. Doesn't really have to challenge him with a fastball if he doesn't want to. Very high to center. Gross going back. Still going back. Warning track. He's got it side retired. So Ben Sheets gets out of the jam and the Yankees do not score. From the Coliseum, let's take a look at the A's lineup. We set it in the open. Lots of changes tonight. Pennington at short, Martin at first, Sweeney and right. Kurt Suzuki jumps into the cleanup spot. Eric Chavez will hit fifth. Kevin Kuzmanoff drops down to sixth. Gabe Gross in the lineup tonight in center field. Rosales at second. Patterson in left. Yankees defensively: Gardner, Granderson, Win in the outfield. Rodriguez, Jeter, Cano, Teixeira on the infield. Posada is the catcher. Phil Hughes is the pitcher.
So Cliff Pennington. The first 15 games of the season hitting in the ninth spot. So Cliff is used to going to the dugout, taking a break for a little while. Roger Davis just getting a night off. Of course, he had been in the leadoff position. First 15. On the other side, the Yankees talking to Nick Swisher and after the big two run single in the first inning. It's not in the lineup because Randy Wynn is a right field, as you mentioned. So Nick said it was a scheduled night off. <laughs> he always smiling. Oh, how about a delayed call there, Tommy? <laughs> We're not in a two or three second delay, are we? Bennington waits on the one two pitch from Phil Hughes. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Okay, okay, here's his first start again. Gets the athletics says he's made three previous appearances out of the bullpen, but now the rotation is much more exciting. Job at Chamberlain. And here we're going for the fifth spot, and it is Phil Hughes. One start against the Angels, five innings, 108 pitches, of course, career high. One home run, as we mentioned, he has developed a cut fastball that he is using a lot. Kind of a short arm delivery. Quarter with a short arm. He was the Yankees' number one pick in 2004, the 23rd pick in that first round. Still a young guy, just 23 years old, and a big guy, 6'5, 240 pounds. Fourteen career, most by a player drafted by the Yankees in the first round. <laughs> wow. Three and oh. Yankees still think that this young man is going to be special in the rotation. Hey, Hall of Famer in the house. Well, he's sitting between some Yankees. Of course, he was a Yankee. Matthew Henderson still has the team lead in stolen bases, which is a shot. Check out our keys to the game brought to you by Toyota. Sheets needs to go deep. He'd like to do that. Pitch uh, deep in the ball game as he has gone just almost six innings. And Yankees are pitching no walks. He's already walked one, but how about an A's lineup shuffle we talked about? So Ben started out not so great, but ends up the first inning, top half, getting out of it thanks to a strikeout, throw him out double play. And a challenge to Alex Rodriguez on a 3 1 fastball. You know what he might have been thinking? I'm not going to mess around with a curveball changeup. I'm let these guys know I'm a challenger right, right from the beginning. That's right. And he did. Because if he had missed on three and one, or at least thrown a breaking ball, might have come back and challenged a fastball where Alex would have been looking for it a little bit more. Okay, so there might have been a little bit of doubt in Rodriguez's mind. Broken bat to Shara. Jumps out of the way of the bat. Ends up being a. 4 1 put out, but Teixeira was in a tough spot. It looked like he was going to field it, but then it, maybe he saw the bat out of the corner of his eye. I probably also saw Cano had a better chance yeah. to field the ball and Matthew feed it to the pitcher vision. covering. The he would have had, yeah, I think it's more of the bat than anything, but Cano was right there. Might have called him off. But a little scary when you start going for a ball and then all of a sudden you see this black weapon coming after you oh. with a jagged edge. Jagged end and <laughs> wow, I agree. So two outs, Barton in scoring position for Kurt Suzuki. Fastball first strike. Suzuki a good night last night, a home run, a couple of hits. In his career, has beat up the Yankees. He is a 403 career hitter. He's 25 for 62 against the Yankees. Remember last year, he had a home run off CC Sabathia at Yankee Stadium. New Yankee Stadium. He had a home run last night. So he likes facing the Yankees. 
We'll see CC tomorrow afternoon. There's a good fastball from Hughes. Just uh, two seam fastball about 90 comes up and in the curtain. Came right back in his wheelhouse. Vasquez knew it, and it was not a cheap one. Up the stairs in left field. Second for Kurt. Martin, a good lead. Nobody holding him on at second base. And there's the high fastball, 94 miles an hour. Suzuki swings and misses. A couple of strikeouts for Phil Hughes. We head to the second inning. No score. Second game traveling this season. Take the A's with you. Subscribe to MLB.tv today to see every A's game live or on demand on your computer. Visit OaklandAthletics.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. Sluggers is good promotion. Yeah. Good night. It's for a slug. Good crowd tonight. Robinson Cano leading it off for the Yankees in the second inning. Kurt Ball stays a bit. Cano, Bosada, and Granderson. Good start for Robinson Cano. He's got a base hit to right field. Sends a streak, doesn't it? That's right. The hitless streak here at the Coliseum. It's bad. What was he last night? 0 for. He was 0 for 2. He walked the three. So that's 0 for 29, 1 for 30. First in his nice 38 B's here. Played appearances in a way. And a pretty good fastball inside, but missing with a curveball. Sheets in through the fastball. So Posada steps in. Pitch a strike. Posada was one for five with two RBIs last night. Over 1,500 games behind the plate for the Yankees. Look at Jeffrey, age 38, catching as much as he has. She's good curveball for the second strike. Posada tagging him tonight. And he said, I heard you're riding a bike 35, 40 miles every day. And he said, it's, I just kind of like to get out in the offseason and out see the scenery. But that's what he does. So you can see why he's able to catch over 1,500 games, stays in great shape, and continues to do very well for the Yankees. The only team he's played for. Just foul. Culpa had to skip out of the way. See, that's a difference in the hard curve that Ben throws and the 0-2 slower variety gave Posada a chance to 
fortunately for Ben to get out in front and pull the ball. But a very hittable curveball thrown that slowly. This time Posada lays off the curveball in the dirt. Cano has pretty good speed at first. He's not a big base dealer. Not really good, which is way high. So a shot of uh, the throwing hand, the right hand of Jorge Posada, which been being the hand that he gives us signs with, and it's like uh, white out liquid paper, and that's to enable his pitcher to see the signs. You guys use tape. So you guys use fingernail polish, but I wouldn't go that far. So you use the white out, you can wash it off after the game. Is it just simple? Some pitchers just. Don't see as well, yeah, or let's see. Really? Well, Suzuki the other night, I can't remember who was was pitching, but pitcher looked in, and it kept. It might have been Sheets at his last start. You see the fingers there are used by Osana, the index middle finger, so are two, so that enables with the gray pants. Gray pants, yeah. For the background, and, and like even with the white pin stripes in the Stadium, you still you're able to see definitely the the, the paint on the fingers, but. Sheets was looking in, he couldn't see, and Suzuki just kept spreading the legs farther and yeah. giving the signs, but it wasn't working. It wasn't working. A lot of shadows are created when a catcher gets down in the position. And we've seen a catcher use signs, yeah. hand signs, on his chest protector. That's usually with the runner in second. Swing and a miss with the runner going, the throw to second out of time. Cano has to stay with us. Osada strikes out. And he helped out Ben Sheets, swung in a pitch that was high. Uh, not much chance. He got a. Great jump. Did Cano watch the top of your screen taking off? And so by the time Suzuki got the ball, pretty good pitch to throw, but still a little bit up. It had to be right on the bag. It was up a little bit. And Mike Malitsky at second base, we're told, with the change of the umpire crew. Yes, that's correct. And Mike Malinsky is the umpire that was called up to take the place of Ed Rapuano. Have not heard. Any report on him? Is he okay? Talked to Matt Weiss. Of course, Matt handles and takes care of the umpires. And he said, I thought everything was okay as far as MRI, and, uh, but they wanted to bring somebody in anyway and not have Rapuano come back out on the field. Derek Barton on the back end flips it to Sheets, who beats Granderson to the bag for the second out. This is what happened to home plate umpire Ed Rapuano last night, and he had to leave the game. That's why we still are concerned. He's okay. And again, it went down to his knees. Posada grabbed him, and he did stay in the game. But after another couple of batters, just walked off the field, and not a bad idea. Just make sure. When in doubt, there's just been too many incidents the last couple of years where umpires have been hit and caused some serious damage. Nice block by Kurt Suzuki with the runner at third. Randy Wynn is the hitter. Wynn playing in right field tonight. Kurt Suzuki again showing his expertise in blocking balls in the dirt. Moved over it, blocked it, kept it in front of him. Of course, that's with Cano at third. Talk about stress. That's stress. When you know the pitcher's going to throw a hard curve, and you know your job is to block the ball in the dirt to keep the runner from scoring from third. Swing and a miss by one and one. Randy Wynn signing a one year contract with the Yankees in the offseason. Sam Ramon, so I'm yeah. sure he's got a few family and friends from over the hill, and he's had a lot of them when he played for the Giants for about, about three years. Four years. So he goes coast to coast, San Francisco yeah. to New York. Great signed by the Yankees. 35 years old, Randy Wynn. Slowly hit. Sheets grabs it, spins around, throws. Got it. Well, that's great to have a strong arm. Ben Sheets made a great play to save a run. So Ben Sheets helps himself out, and the Yankees do not score.
to end the top of the second inning. Chavez steps in against Phil Hughes. We're going to miss. Hughes has had a lot of swing throughs already. Pop up. Posada fires the mask. Uh, he's going to watch him drop into the first row of the seats behind. That's what you got to do, right? Right. Throw that mask. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. of fired it. Yep. And there are times you can hit an umpire if he's following too closely. And you always apologize because you never want the umpires to think you're throwing your mask in. No. You would never do that. But the important thing is to get it out of the way so you don't step on it. The ball has to come back, which they always do. 0-2 pitch. Strike three called on the outside corner. Time now for the Home Depot doing more on defense. You will not find a better play than this for a pitcher. Checks away by Randy Wade. Excellent spin. Speed. And Ben Sheets covered himself and then fired a minute to first base. Nice stretch by Derek Barton. But watch this. He does not throw awkwardly. He waited, planted the foot, knowing that he has a very strong arm, but he threw about a 92 mile an hour fastball to Derek Barton. At Ex least. Yeah. But an excellent play by Ben Sheets to get himself out of the inning. The important thing is the fact that on the check swing, a lot of guys you see stop and or maybe jump and throw, but Ben went to the ground and excellent play and saved a run. May have added a little arm strength right there. <laughs> Kevin Kuzman off the hitter. Off 224 with a homer and six RBIs. Talked about Rajay Davis getting the night off tonight. Barton, Pennington, and Kuzminoff are now the three A's players that have started every game. Two and two the count. Kuzminov was one for four last night. He struck out three times. And he strikes out again. Well, just a challenging fastball. That well, having a Not little bit of standing action coming from the outside, but early in the game, you establish a fastball. And that's what Posada's doing with Bill Hughes. Not really messing around with a lot of pitches except a good 92, 93 mile hour fastball. Gabe Gross steps in. Gross starting in center field tonight. Gross this year has started three games in left field, one in right field tonight in center. Wild game going on at Fenway Park. The Rangers and the Red Sox are tied at seven in the 12th inning. All you had to do is watch Josh Beckett go in the dugout, slam his glove, and you knew he'd given it up. Well, I saw seven to four yeah. the Red Sox, and then I think Josh Hamilton hit a three run. Was it a three run home? I think it was. B.I. So will confirm, I then, think. Yeah, I, I, I saw Hamilton. Score. I didn't know if it was a three run homer, but. He's late in the game. So they got to. There's <laughs> B.I. We talk yes. about B.I. all the time. And that's our stats man. It's taking too long to figure out who hit the home run and whether it was a three run home run or not. Probably looking for more airtime. Well, he wants to make sure the information is complete and accurate. B.I. stands for best information. Yes, it was a three run. See, you know, actors and musicians, they go by one name and everybody yeah. knows who they are. B.I., just the initials, and everybody knows who he is. Best information, B.I. Or he's 
sitting next to what BBB brought last night. That's Busy Bee Bakery. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot get that off your mind. There he is, folks. And yes, there's the Busy Bee Bakery. Good, he's right there. The talented B.I. Curves. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Phil Hughes strikes out the side. He has five strikeouts in the first two innings. And the A's scoreless. Sheets versus Hughes. Brett Gardner, the ninth place hitter for the Yankees, takes a strike. Curve drops in 0 2. I like what Joe Girardi says about Brett Gardner. They feel like his enthusiasm, figure every time he hits the ball, he's got a chance to get on base, and yep. he does with his speed. He can fly. As all this baseball do, baseball people do, Ray, you try to keep up with everything in the offseason. There were some teams that wanted Brett Gardner to be their starting center fielder, but the Yankees held on. So he was in demand a little bit. Not too much wrong with this curveball. So had to reach for it, but that's after cross the plate. Barton handles a very wow. tough hop, steps on the bag. Wishes he'd got that play last night. Exactly. That, hop. that was uh, that was the difference there. Time now for our subway eat fresh. Ask Glenn and Ray. Previn Nadu from San Carlos asks, who is the most friendly player that either of you have talked to? On the A's? Well, I mean, former A's and now the Yankees, but you cannot beat Nick Swish. No, I mean, Swish, Swish is uh, about as friendly, and I don't know if he's ever made an enemy or anybody talks to Swish. But, you know, we're fortunate. The players are all very friendly. Jeter's retired for the second out. Another good play by. And he's infielder Kuzmanoff ranging far to his left. And quickly Number unloading because Derek Gina runs well. Landon Powell's friend, of course, is a catcher. He's back with the A's. Jake Fox now can be used at other positions with Mark Ellis going on the disabled list. So essentially, the A's have four catchers, four players who could be catchers. Powell and uh, Kurt Suzuki and then 
Derek Martin at first was a catcher, and Jake Fox has started a couple of games. That's yeah, a good group of guys. Rajay and Ricky spent some time in spring training together. Rajay Davis is one of the nicest guys you'll ever yeah. meet. That's true. JT Snow. JT Snow in the house. Bringing them all out tonight. Yeah. Place at first base. Looked like they all had pretty good seats, too. <laughs> like to know who's springing for the uh, down the level seats. Nick Johnson. 3 1 pitch foul to the left side. So full count. Five in a row retired by Ben Sheets. So boss Ted Griggs here. Maybe Ted has the seats down there that he's letting some of the uh, former great players sit in. Three two curveball and Johnson takes it for the walk. With a hitter who has the eye that Nick Johnson has. Curveball has to be struck. Yep. You cannot fool him. No, You're not going to swing at a bad pitch. And he took North that one and he might not hit a lot of home runs. He has one this year. To make a mistake, he will take you deep, but he is definitely a patient hitter. First pitch to Teixeira. With that pitch, that pitch that Ben Sheets threw, I bet 70% of the guys would swing at it. Because it's a pretty good pitch, close, two strikes. Barton charges, gets the big hop, steps in the bag, side retired. So Ben Sheets has another good inning. Bottom of the third coming up, but it'll be Rosales, Patterson, and Pennington. Rosales, Patterson, and Pennington against Phil Hughes. Phil Hughes has been very impressive in the first two innings. He has five strikeouts. It's just his 29th pitch, 14 in each of the first two innings. There's the cut. Yep, that's the pitch that he has developed. Short arm delivery that makes it a very tough pitch to pick up if you're a hitter, like a sharp breaking slider, which he also throws, but that uh, more of the cutter. Right field line, but it's going to drop foul. It's been a, it was a very interesting 2009 season for Hughes. He started in the minor leagues and then was brought up late April and put in the starting rotation. 
pitch so so. And then they moved him to the bullpen. And he started pitching very well in the bullpen. But really, the second half of the season, he became the setup man, and he was terrific. Very good. He yeah. throws that hard. He does in the eighth hard. inning yeah. and setting up Mariano Rivera and that kind of stuff. It's why it's kind of a tough decision. Although Java Chambers, we saw last night, throws the same velocity. It's hard with a good breaking ball. Hughes, as a reliever last year, had a 1.40 ERA, and the league hit 172 against him. So you're right, he was able to come in and just let it go. But now, as a starter, a little bit different, but still throws hard. I pop up shallow center. Granderson can't find it. Wynn sees it, and Randy Wynn has it in shallow right center field. Gonzalez might have been a third if that ball dropped. He was almost a second. You know, Twilight, although one, that bad right now. Randerson, I'm yelling, don't see it, don't see it, but Randy went a different angle coming from right field so easily. Randy's got to feel great playing in right field at the Coliseum versus Ken. Yeah, that quits a start around. Yeah. Here's Patterson, a late addition to the A's lineup. Travis Buck was scratched. Buck with a strained right oblique. Patterson, one for eight to start this season with five strikeouts. Derek's brother Corey was signed by the Baltimore Orioles to minor league contract. As PA were just was found out is. Uh, to be out for three months. Well, wasn't he with the Orioles before? Of course, yes, he was. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I Seattle in spring training is an invite. Not to accept their minor league position. Jeter comes in onto the infield grass. He's got it. Two outs. After Thursday's game, that's tomorrow. Fans are invited to meet A shortstop Cliff Pennington. That's quite a treat to get to meet Cliff. He'll be on A's Talk with Chris Townsend at the Holiday Inn Hotel and Suites at 77 Higginburg in Oakland. That's Thursday after the A's game. That's tomorrow. A's and Yankees, your chance to meet Cliff Pennington. First pitch to Pennington is outside. Pennington struck out swinging in the first inning. That high fastball. Chamberlain and Hughes battled for the fifth spot in the rotation in spring training. It was a big deal in Yankee land. He just decided it was best to have Hughes in the rotation, Chamberlain in the bullpen. And it's just fouled on the first baseline. Curveball coming right into the inside part to Cliff Pennington and just outside. Did not touch any part of the bag, and that tells you what the call was. Long look by Hughes, the one two pitch to Pennington. Shoots one. Down into the left field corner, but into the seats. So Pennington making Hughes work a little bit.
another curveball and another ground ball. The head switch was in white. You should go need him. Except, yeah. <laughs> need one tonight. Another one, two. And another foul ball. So that. Slider, cutter, breaking down and into Pennington. And Pennington shoots one to left. Gardner playing shallow. He's got it. Side retired. Three up, three down inning. Alex Rodriguez will lead it off. He'll be followed by Keno and Posada. No score. Yankees and A's are scoreless, top of the fourth inning. And Ben Sheets back to work. He'll face Alex Rodriguez. Curves. A miss by Rodriguez. Well, one of the big pitches Ben has thrown already tonight was the fastball on three and one. To Alex Rodriguez challenged him with a runner on base in scoring position. This time he was sitting fastball, got a curveball first pitch and swung and missed. Inside again, two and one. Shoots it to right field. Sweeney dives and he can't get it. Goes by him. All the way to the wall. Rodriguez hits second. He's digging for third. And he will be safe with a slide. It's a triple for Rodriguez. A hanging breaking ball and he lined it to right. And some out of the dugout probably because the hip surgery from last year. This ball slides it away from Ryan Sweeney. Almost impossible to catch. And by diving, going for it, trying to backhand, but you see how much he missed it. And with the ball slicing that way, that much. Hindsight being 20 20, taking on one hop, single, hope for a double play. But he gets a triple because of the dive and the miss. Cano takes a strike. Ray, would, would you say if a ball is slicing away from you that maybe. 
it's further away from you than you think yeah. when you dive. Yeah. You just have to know how the, or who hit the ball. In this case, a right-hander is going to slice. With an inside-out swing. Left-hander to the left field. The ball is going to slice towards the line. Same with the right-hander to right field. Now it's running the bases very well. Yep. No indication of any effect from the hip surgery they had last year, and there was really no cause for it because everything was fine. And that is a fair ball over the bag at first into the corner. Rodriguez scores. Cano heading for third. Rosales throw to the third baseman. Guzman off is not in time. How often do you see back to back triples? Not a lot. Curveball inside to Cano and lifted up a little bit and just inside Jorge. the line. Ryan Sweeney, long Number run to get to the ball. Jorge. And Cano getting the ball from the third base coach and turn on the afternoon. So Yankees take a one nothing lead here in the top of the fourth and here's Jorge Posada. Posada grounds it. Barton picks it up, races to the bag. It'll get a run home as Cano comes in to score. 2 0 New York. Now batting, number 14, Curtis. So Posada picks up his ninth RBI of the year. Granderson grounded out in the second inning. So back to back triples by Rodriguez and Cano and a Posada ground out. The Yankees, the two runs. Red Sox just beat the Rangers 8 7 in 12 innings. Kevin Euclid with the game winning hit. Series for the Rangers, where it's a tough place to play, anyways. They've gone back and forth in that series. But also, they just left New York where they were swept. Yeah. Now, it's the first two games in Boston, so a tough trip for the Rangers. And they be glad to get out of town. So the Rangers now five and nine, and they have lost six in a row. Two two to Curtis Granderson, one out here in the fourth. Randy Wynn in the on deck circle. Pitch by Sheets, he jams Granderson. Kuzminov has it. Two outs here in the fourth. Time now for our trivia question for tonight. It's brought to you by, as always, AT&T. And here it is. Derek Jeter is the all-time Major League Baseball leader with 175 postseason hits. Which two players rank one and two for the most postseason hits in Oakland history? A lot of guys to choose from. Well, who had big offensive series in it's the early 70s? It was a postseason, right? Postseason, so yeah. There's been five for the A's in the early 70s. Captain Sal was pretty good. Rudy. That's a lot of hits. Yeah, did you look how many years Derek Jeter played in? World Series, but also the League Championship and Division Series. So three different right. that helps. levels of uh, postseason versus, of course, when the Yankees won five in a row, it was the Yankees played somebody in the National League and went straight to World Series. No playoffs, no Division or League Championship Series. The Yankees have been in the playoffs 14 of the last 15 years, only 2008 in that stretch.
one and two to win. <laughs> what was George's job with the Yankees? Assistant to the traveling, assistant to the assistant traveling secretary, I believe. <laughs> George Costanza's job was with the Yankees. Swing and a miss on the curveball. Third strikeout for Ben Sheets. Couple of runs for the Yankees. Bottom of the fourth. Coming up, two nothing, New York. In the top of the fourth inning. So Phil Hughes, a couple of runs to work with, but plenty of time for the ace. They're still looking for their first hit against Phil Hughes, though. Hughes, there's a strike in there in the outside corner. One walk, five strikeouts for Hughes. He's thrown 46 pitches. Remember, this is just Hughes' second start of the year. Curve, strike two, ball. Wow. Didn't have to be. No. Like that, thrown to the outside part of the plate. I bet Tommy Cam was short, going around the plate. Mark got a fastball from the back. Take a look at the previous curveball, called a strike. Oh my. Oh, go a little bit around like that. That's, yeah. But you see the positioning of Tom Hallyu, and you can understand why it was called a strike. See where he sat on the right shoulder of Busana, so a little bit of an angle to the outside. So there it is again. Wow. Strike three called. Barton can't believe it. Take another look at this one. This is a, a fastball away. And here comes the overhead. Right look at Busana set up outside. Look at this. Ryan Sweeney. Yeah, I don't blame you, Derek. Got a swing, anything close. Here's Sweeney. Strike! <laughs> Sweeney grounded out to second. First inning. Those camera shots. Tommy Cam. Lot of camera right next to us here in the booth. You know, the eye that Dirk Barton has, that's why his look was what it was, looking out towards home plate. Two a pitch called strike two and one. There it is. Tommy Cam 
first time we can. We've got a camera that's directly over home plate. So we're showing our center field camera, which is to left center. So the angle is a little bit different than what you're looking at right there. That's the left center field camera. Robinson Cano gobbles it up. Two outs. All right, let's answer our AT&T trivia question. J Derek Jeter is the all-time leader with 175 postseason hits. Which two players rank one and two for the most postseason it? hits Hester. in Oakland history? Hester. Ricky Hester. Henderson and Joe Rudy. And everybody's locked in. Carney Lansford on that list. Sal Banda, you mentioned him. It's a big series. Here's Kurt Suzuki who struck out swinging in the first. He drives one to left center, but in the ballpark. Granderson near the warning track. He's got it. Side retired. Three up, three down inning. So Phil Hughes is rolling. Two nothing New York. Every day until April 30th. Visit CashCreek.com for details. Over 30,000 in the ballpark tonight. Some of them. The food. Reggie Jackson is in the house. Keep showing people. We'll have a, a lineup of yeah, former pretty good, uh, pretty good players, huh? Already got a leadoff hitter and a cleanup hitter. Brett Gardner, Derek Jeter, and Nick Johnson against Ben Sheets. The Yankees are in town. Reggie is definitely going to be here. He yeah. is looking for the Yankees as a, an advisor, special assistant. You see who signed on to be a special advisor for the Reds? Joe Morgan. Yeah. How about that? Bay Area native Joe Morgan, all in favor. Going to work for the Cincinnati Reds. That's a great big red machine. Yeah. Three one pitch just a bit inside. Gardner with a leadoff walk. That's the guy you want to walk with his yeah. speed. In sheets. Right. He has to concentrate on trying to keep him close. Derek Jeter has been up twice tonight. He swung at the first pitch both times. Base at the right field, ground out the third. Good play by Kuzminov. He might take a pitch or two to see if Gardner's going to run. Gardner already has seven steals yeah. on here. He's seven for eight. Think about the Yankees and all the power, obviously, but they have stolen 15 bases already this year.
Six for six stealing third. Jeter is one for two. Yankees have scored 76 runs in their first 13 games. That's the most runs in the American League. A little bit closer. Pitches a run on if you're a base stealer. Two curveballs. Anytime a pitcher throws a curve, much more difficult pitch for a catcher to handle. A lot of times you see a pitcher paying a little bit more attention to the runner at first if he is going to throw a curveball, an off speed pitch, versus a fastball, which helps the catcher. It also helps the hitter. Over sheets his head. Pennington bare hands in a very nice play by the A shortstop. Gardner goes to second. Really not much more Cliff could do, but what a great no, job of looking the ball into his hand. That is a great play. Jeter, of course, Gold Glover, but Cliff Pennington, the Gold Glove play. As he looked the ball into his hand, you have to catch the ball first and hope to have a good enough grip. And make the strong throw. He did accurate and able to get the speedy Jeter. One out, and here's Nick Johnson. First big strike to Johnson, who has walked twice. To try to keep Gardner close. He knows also that Gardner is six for six, stealing third. <laughs> the two step? Something like that. So Johnson in this series, he's 0 for 3, but he has walked four times. High to right, Sweeney going back. Near the wall, and he's got it right in front of the wall. Gardner stays at second. Well, you could say that it got up too high. Or better yet, welcome to Oakland, Nick Johnson. Yeah, Ten rows deep at Yankee yeah, Stadium. Absolutely. That ball, I'm sure he's running to first base thinking to hit my second home run. Sounded great, but this is the Bay Area night heavy air. And at the warning track at the wall, I'm just really tracking it all the way. But that is definitely a home run in uh, like I said Yankee Stadium and oh, yeah. tomorrow afternoon the day game here at the Coliseum. Fortunately, and out tonight. Good pitch to to Shara right on the outside corner. Zero for two tonight. One for six in the series is to Shara, and he's behind in the count of two. Change up on the corner, a curveball. Perfectly thrown. That's struck out on the fastball in the first inning with a clock stealing after taking the 3 2 fastball. This is pitch number 81 for Ben Sheets.
three walks and three strikeouts so far. Last night, the walks were a major issue for the ace pitchers. They walked 10 and five scored. None of the walks have scored tonight. Barton gets a big hop. He'll take it himself. And that will do it. Lead off walk to Brett Gardner, but no damage by the Yankees. 2 0 New York as we head to the bottom of the fifth. At 7.30, the Sharks and the Colorado Avalanche, Game 5. Sharks grab Game 4 in dramatic fashion. We tie up that series, two games apiece. Coverage begins at 7 o'clock with Sharks pregame live. The home of the Sharks, Stanley Cup playoffs. It is Comcast Sportsnet, California. So tomorrow, you could probably just turn on Comcast Sportsnet, California, and just leave it on because the A's and the Yankees will be on in the afternoon, and then... The Sharks at night. High to right field. Randy Wynn keeps an eye on it. Drifts back a little bit. He's got it. So A's pregame live starts at noon tomorrow and then the ball game at 1230. How about it? Number five. Kevin Kuzminov. Here's Kuzminov. Talking about watching the games in HD, high definition, and of course tonight, beautiful night at the Coliseum. Tomorrow afternoon, should be even nicer if you want to see some real grass. Daytime, yeah. In HD, I know the A's players were talking about this time of year. It's nice to have some day games in Oakland because right. it is cold at night. Cold, ball carries a little bit better, and it's that way in a lot of ballparks. Hundred and forty five games this year, high definition. Guess we State, California, the Oakland A's baseball. It's a good chance to watch it in the best form, HD. Kuzminov trying to get going. He's been struggling as of late. Ball runs away.
Here's a couple shakes. Now he's ready. Kuzminov just got a piece of that one. The pitching matchup tomorrow will be Dallas Braden and CC Sabathia. Nice off day for CC here at his hometown. Coming in the Yankees on Sunday night. Got a chance to go to a field that he helped renovate. Spent a lot of money to do it and got the first pitch. Monday night. You can understand why Phil Hughes was shaking off the side and wanted to throw the fastball because he is throwing very hard right down the middle. Challenging him with a fastball and Kuzman off. No contact. There they are. Vallejo, California. I think they're here tonight. I guess somebody's going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> to watch their man pitch. He probably bought them all tickets too. Why not? There's a strike to Gabe Gross. 19 game winner last year with CC Sabathia. So his first year in New York. I would say it worked out just about the way he thought it would. Wins 19 games. They won the World Series. <laughs> I can get another one. Whoa. Hope he's left handed. <laughs> now, since he's been very good, and that's uh, for the his hometown, Vallejo. We back during the offseason, a lot of Christmas parties, charitable functions that he sponsored, attended, and, and a lot of very good things. Giving a lot back to the community. Two and two now to Gabe Gross. So we hope the young man's left handed. I think he is. Even if he's not, he may become <laughs> left handed starting tonight. He's got the glove. See it sitting there. Nobody's going to take that baby away. Somebody's calling him and say, "You're on TV. You're on smile. TV. Wave. Or texting. <laughs> they do it. Somebody <laughs> got text. There they are. All right. <laughs> Everybody wave. Just keep waving. Just wave like crazy. That's just, right. just keep waving. <laughs> Wherever the camera is, we're going to wave. Gardner again playing shallow. He's got it side retired. Cruise control right now for Phil Hughes. Two nothing Yankees.
and it's staying warm with this A's running outfit on. Swing and a miss by Alex Rodriguez. Rodriguez led off the fourth inning with a triple. And then Robinson Cano hit a triple. Back to back triples last time that happened here at the Coliseum May of 2002. Randy Wynn and Steve Cox. Don't see it a lot. Rodriguez got the triple when Ryan Sweeney dove for his line drive. Couldn't get it, it went past him. To Pennington at short. Throws in time. So Cliff Pennington takes care of Alex Rodriguez for the first out here in the sixth. Now running, number 24, Robinson Cano. And Robinson Cano steps in. Gamer. He's explaining the game. Is that great? So you look up and you see all those zeros <laughs> in the A's column. That means pitcher for the Yankees has no hit the A's for the first five innings. And that's a bad thing. <laughs> if you're an A's yes. fan, yeah. Bill Hughes, very good so far. Down at Anaheim. Angels with a 3 0 lead at the fifth over the Tigers. And Seattle with a 4 to 1 lead over the Orioles in the fifth. And if the A's don't come back and win this one, and those two teams do, that means three teams have the same record, That's right? The A's, the Angels, and the Mariners. And the Angels on a nice roll. They are playing very yeah. good baseball. Finished road trip. Toronto. Playing well and then return home doing the same. Good change up from Sheets to even the count at two to two. Excellent pitch. You look at about 83, 84 miles an hour, a pitch that Ben is throwing more and more, as we mentioned earlier, to complement his excellent fastball and curveball. Strikeout number four. No, a, a very no, hard no, curveball. No, see no, the no, effort he no, put no, on that no. curve and went straight down. Twelve to six. Great concentration on the target and a perfect strike. And Tom Hallion is really having a good time tonight with the strikeout call. <laughs> Cano is thinking the same thing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and he auditioning for Leslie Nielsen's part. All right. Check it out. Right, great effort and yeah. <laughs> Looking in the stands too. Of course. Yeah. See when a guy has that kind of strike three call, that's fine. But I'm thinking he's dying to do it. <laughs> Which means <laughs> it's not you better, good. <laughs> you better be ready to swing with two strikes. Three and zero oh to Posada. Artie Foster, that's a strike. <laughs> so, that's the tall lefty gets loose. Jerry Blevins. Sheets at ninety-five pitches. Rosales picks it up, flips to first, and Ben Sheets has retired six in a row. Bottom of the six coming up. Rosales, Patterson, and Pennington. Two nothing, New York.
Flight Free Scan. Coors Light Free Scan is brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Fun at the ballpark tonight. Bill Hughes back to work. His pitch count is at 67. He's walked one. He has struck out seven. The A's do not have a hit. Plenty of our Rosanos to at least think about a punt. Just try something to get on base. Only one base runner will walk to Derek Mark in the first inning. Side corner strike one and one. Time for the team to run. Rosales hit a fly ball to right field in the third. Inside corner strike two call. That looks like a bar out of Rivera Cutter. Continues to throw out in the A's bullpen. See how much Rosales leans over, but not so much over the plate, just his setup and fans for a little bit of a wake up call inside. And went around on slide. Strikeout number eight for Hughes. Well, this legendary performance is brought to you by Nations Giant Hammerdews. Remember this play, July 1st of 2004. Derek Jeter into the stands. And it was against the Boston Red Sox that he made the play. Took a little bit of a beating. Great play by Derek Jeter. When you've got a giant appetite, it's got to be Nations. How many more games on the homestand? Four? Yeah, tomorrow and then the weekend against the Tribe. Have you seen a burger yet? Huh? Have you seen a burger? No, have not. No, neither. Hey, Nations Burger. Maybe those guys could make a call for us. Reggie holding court. Of course, uh, the guy he's talking to can hold court as well. <laughs> Reggie and Ricky. Mr. Wolf right behind him. Probably asked him if they'd get a bat. Be a fun conversation to listen to him. Ricky Anderson and Reggie Jackson. You can just haul out the record books and open them up. Start there. You know, if Reggie wouldn't have to hold him out, he could tell you. He could tell you. Yeah. <laughs> and rightfully so, because he has so many yeah. records and such a great player. And One and two the count to Eric Patterson. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Fastball right by Patterson. Two outs here in the sixth. Fastball to the outside corner, a little foul tip into the middle of Jorge Posada. Seventy-six pitches now for Hughes. So Cliff Pennington will hit. Cliff in the leadoff spot tonight. Curb near the bag. Jeter has it, and that will do it. 17 in a row retired by Phil Hughes. 2 nothing Yankees after six.
for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog experts. Jerry Blevins takes over here in the seventh inning. He'll face Granderson, Wynn, and Gardner. So Ben Sheets goes six innings, four hits, two runs, three walks, and four strikeouts for Sheets. 96 pitches, and that's right about where he's been pitch wise. Yeah, 96. In his first three steps. Yeah. 7 1 10, yeah. 96, 96. So he's definitely right there. I would say probably could have got another inning, but he is from having not pitched all of last year. Fourth start tonight. Pitched well, two runs. That's a pretty good start for six innings, but unfortunately, his club has yet to get a hit. Just one base run. Barton a long ways to his right. It's going to be a tough play, and Clarkins got there in time. Left hander falling towards the third base side. A long way to recover, and especially with the speed of Granderson. But Barton probably could have let Rosales field the ball and go to first himself. So and you see Rosales behind Barton, long flip and bang bang. And Call is yes. Jerry Blevins' right foot touches the inside part of the bag, just barely with the size 13s. Nice to have big feet, <laughs> big shoes. Yeah. Randy Wynn steps in. With a ground out and a strikeout. Still looking for his first hit with the Yankees. He's sold for eight. Ball wind swings and misses. And he's over for three, two outs. Challenge with the fastball. Zook wanted it down low. Pitch was up towards the middle of the plate. And win. Strike up from the left side against Ben Sheets. Also, Sheets a tremendous play on a check swing by Randy Wynn in the second inning. And two strikeouts and a ground down. So Brett Gardner steps in. Win shut out the Indians today behind Cisco Liriano. He went eight innings. What a boost that would be for the Twins. He's 2 0. Oh. So that was a home game for the Twins. So they are now 11 and 4 overall, and they're 6 and 2 in their new home target field. And set up. <laughs> I've been looking, and they were right at 38,000 yeah, every yeah, night. Yeah, there it goes. They're going to have probably every game sold out. A few standing room only. There are a few tickets available, but not a bad problem to have. Yep. Royals beat the Blue Jays in Toronto four to three. Jose Guillen another home run. He's got six home runs this year, so he's having a real good start for him. the Royals. Strictly a DH. Rosales will have to hurry. Juggles, not in time. Once the juggle occurred, you had to figure that Gardner was probably going to beat it out. Now that's the speed. It wasn't hit hard in the first place, and so Rosales had to charge, and the transfer went up in the top of his hand, no grip, and. Now, you'd have to say Gardner's got to be attempting to steal in this situation. Did not last time. He had a leadoff walk, but this is a two out infield hit. Clevens will do his best to keep Gardner close.
Tyson Ross just now starts to loosen up. Hit hard, but at Pennington who flips to Rosales side retired. Seventh inning stretch from the Coliseum. The A's are still looking for their first hit off Phil Hughes. Right now, a good ball game. It's two to nothing. The A's are still in it, but Phil Hughes, a no hitter through six innings. Barton, Sweeney, and Suzuki against Hughes here in the seventh. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Barton, a walk and a strikeout. Tampa Bay Rays shut out the White Sox in Chicago 12 to nothing. So the White Sox 5 and 10. So a slow start there. Oh, could have been a strike. Call the ball 2 and 1. So Barton is retired, and that'll bring up Sweeney. Derek Barton, a slow walk back to the dugout. Not a breaking ball from Phil Hughes. Slider on three and two, or cutter, and popped it up. So right now, what Jorge Posada and Phil Hughes are thinking about is obviously the no hitter, seventh inning, and one out in the seventh. So you start to see pitches that maybe you wouldn't see in a normal game. In other words, breaking pitches and more fastball counts, and not opposed to trying to get a hit of chase or even walking him, as opposed to giving up a hit. Just hope the strike zone doesn't expand for Tom Hallie any more than it already has in some cases. Halliday one today. He shut out the Atlanta Braves. Roy Halliday. Roy Halliday's 4 0 with a 0 0.82 ERA in his first four starts with the Phillies. People predicted he'd win a whole bunch of games pitching with a good team in the National League, and so far they're 
Jake well, Hudson pitched well again yeah. and lost. Well, and let's uh, watch a little bit of it. And uh, Braves had the bases loaded. Holiday, hard hit ball up the middle. Just to his left, a diving stop by Elliott, turning into a 4 6 3 double play to get out of the inning. Hit hard to center, but Granderson's there. Two outs. So, yeah, Holiday all of a sudden goes to a club that has offense, yeah. that has defense, and he's an excellent pitcher. He loves to go the distance. Now batting the catcher, number eight, Kurt Suzuki. So here's Kurt Suzuki. In a row, retired by Hughes. He walked the second man he faced. That was Derek Barton in the first inning. And four pitches. There's a strike. That was pitch number 86. And not so much a, a problem for Joe Girardi in making a decision as he had with Sissy Sabathia against the Rays in St. Pete. Pitch count was getting up, and he's not going to pitch the ninth. Didn't have to get up a hit anyway. No hitter through seven for Phil Hughes. Yankees two, A's nothing. has developed an analytical product being used by baseball clubs. There's also a product for fans. Improve your fantasy play or track your favorite players and teams. Go to BloombergSports.com for details. Nick Johnson deleted off against Jerry Blevins. Top of the eighth inning, Yankees two and the A's nothing. Watching CeCe Sabathia on the bench with Brett Gardner to his right, Phil Hughes to his left, and won't even talk to Hughes. It's amazing. CC has not said a word to him while he's been sitting there. Nice friendly guy, but <laughs> now I don't think anybody's going to say anything. So when you caught X no hitter, did he want anybody to talk to him or? Hey, he, <laughs> he said I'm going to do it anyway. You can say all you want. I'm not superstitious. Johnson gets caught looking. Well, it was at, way after his pitching at that time. Was like 21 consecutive hitless innings. Three different starts. You may want to talk yeah. about it. Right? Number 25. Three Mark perfect pitches thrown to show. the very patient Nick Johnson. Jerry Blevins. Second strikeout. Doing it very efficiently. 16 pitches, four batters, five batters make it. Mark Teixeira. 0 for 3 in the ball game. I remember listening to the X no hitter on the radio. 3WE, the radio station in Cleveland. 
Great Joe Tate. That's right. He's been doing the Cavaliers now for many, many years. Herb Score were the announcer. We were listening, and probably about 6,000, 7,000 were there <laughs> on Memorial Day, 1977. Trainers are coming out. Let's see. Mark Ellis on the disabled list. Travis Buck scratched right before the game, and now Jerry Blevins. I don't know if it's his back or he's going to come out with two strikes on Teixeira. So Teixeira will get another helmet, turn around, and bat left handed. So Blevins leaves. We'll find out exactly what the injury is. Time for change. Think speedy oil change in tune up. Your oil change tune up. For the athletics, Tyson Ross comes in, takes over for Jerry Blevins, and let's see if we can catch anything on Blevins who left the game with an injury. Another strike to Mark Teixeira as he follows through. And his right leg started lifting that, and that's an indication. He stands behind the mound and then bends over, tries to. Touches toes with a six foot six frame and turns it over to another six foot six. And there's Tyson Ross. What a start he has had in his major league career. Save with three innings. Uh, pitching. So you have CC Sabathia from Maleo and Tyson Ross from right here in Oakland. One and two to Teixeira. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So Teixeira has an interesting at bat, and it ends up with a strikeout. Two strikes. Out, two strikes from the right side. One strike from the left. <laughs> now that I can see if it's the old dog, he would have to change helmets. Nope, that's right. And the Hudson twins now. Uh, see them later. With he wears the double ear flap as a switch hitter. Here's Rodriguez. Rodriguez is one for three, tripled and scored in the fourth. That's when the Yankees scored both of their runs. Back to back triples and a ground out, and that's how the two runs score. Breaking pitch to strike one and one. I feel this has to be from Tyson Ross to face the Seattle Mariners when. In town, start the home stand and start the season. Struck out King Griffey Jr. on a 3 2 2 seamer. And now he faces Alice Rodriguez. Slowly hit down the third baseline, and that's going to be a base hit for Rodriguez. Five hundred and eighty five home runs, and he hits the ball 30 feet. So between Griffey over 600 and Alex Rodriguez, he'll soon reach the 600 mark. 
a swinging bunt, and Kuznetsov absolutely no chance to throw out Rodriguez. That's hit number six for the Yankees. Cano takes a strike on the outside corner. Angels three, Tigers two in the sixth inning. Mariners four, Orioles one in the eighth inning. Toward Pennington, and he will step on the bag, side retired. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Here we go, folks. Chavez, Kuzminov, and Gross against Hughes. Donos and Phil Hughes pretty much sums it up. He was good right from the start. And as we head into the bottom of the eighth inning, he has a no hitter going. He has nine strikeouts. He has walked one. He has retired 20 consecutive after walking Barton in the first. So Phil Hughes, 87 pitches as he takes the ball here in the bottom of the eighth. First pitch to Eric Chavez, bounced off of Hughes, he can't find it, and Chavez is going to have the first hit. A hard hit ball, Hughes knocked it down, and then he couldn't find it. What do they say you have to have the first hit as a clean hit? That's a clean hit, folks. And the question now whether Phil Hughes is okay with where he caught the ball, where the ball hit him, put it that way, as everybody congregating around the Yankee pitcher. Hard hit ball, fastball away from Xavier. And he didn't know where it was and no chance for Posada to get to the ball. I think he got gloves. Love. See on the follow through. Yeah, got him the glove rolled up his left arm and that's where the, the hardness that carry him back towards now oh, boy, what's some great shots, but number five, camera people get first time he answered it. The wreck is thrown all those different angles, and that shows it perfectly where it hit Tom uh, Phil Hughes. That's a good thing, right? Cool. Wow. Yeah, through Tommy directing it. Here's Kuzminov. Remember, this is a 2 nothing game, folks. So just getting a runner on is big for the A's, and it's the Chavez infield hit. Kuzminov has struck out twice against Hughes. And the second time, Hughes has been out of the stretch. Second inning, just a couple of batters, Swinney and Suzuki out of the stretch. Kuzminov got a hanger, and he fouled it back.
Java Chamberlain. Just to warm up. Quickly. Two guys together in Milwaukee. Jim Scanlon, the handy coach of the Brewers, when Ben Sheets was pitching there. One and two now to Kevin Kuzminoff. One for six in the series for Kuzminoff. He has struck out five times. A couple of sliders, cutters, and he's just missing. Good pitches to hit, but he has not been able to square him up. Fez with a short lead at first. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Fastball. And Kuzminov strikes out for the third time. One out here in the bottom of the eighth. Now well, he threw the sliders, but then challenged with a goal tie fastball. And, you know, he has not lost anything off his heater. So Gabe Gross will hit. Gross a strikeout and a fly ball to left field. Way inside. Is Adam Rosales. Shelly getting no big lead at all, and Phil Hughes decided to throw over a couple of times with kind of a possibility of picking off Eric Chavez. Gross, a big swing, it just gets a piece of it. Everybody in the eighth lineup has struck out at least once tonight, except for Ryan Sweeney. Got him. Swung over top. Did that get him one and two to count? Staying correct. Now these are the type of games that you'd like to think that get a runner on base, somebody come come up and hit a home run, and at this point tie the game, but. In this 16th game for the A's, the lineup tonight featuring a total of six home runs, two by Suzuki, two by Pennington, one each by Kuzminoff and Rosales, and that's it. Gross. Kind of a protecting swing, and he shoots it foul. The big guy got it. Chamberlain is stopped throwing, meaning he's Ready to come in if needed. High and foul on the right field. Huh? So Gross is giving Hughes a good battle.
a slicing shot down the third base line. Alex Rodriguez, as he has done against lefties, playing way off the line. Check swing on a curveball, and that's a no swing there. Gabe goes way deep in the batter's box. Very deep. Long look in by Hughes. Curveball and Gross hanging in there. Just gets a piece of it. Chavez is planning on going anywhere. Now full count. Good at bat here by Gross. Be nice to see it end with a base hit or more. Nine of those 100 have let me miss it back. Come from the dugout. This is no way. Those, those are coming on his own. I, I don't think Machiavelli no more than a foot or so off the bag. Three two pitch, and he walked it. Good at bat by Gabe Gross. That's dinner for two at Francesco's. That's a 10 pitch at bat, and that was a great at bat. And, and that's going to do it for yeah. Phil Hughes. The call has been made to the bullpen. It's going to be Jabba Chamberlain. It's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change, tune up and smog experts. Jabba Chamberlain coming in. Phil Hughes, seven and a third tonight. He was terrific. But the A's got something going here in the bottom of the eighth. and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. A's with something going here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Two on, one out. Phil Hughes is out of the game. Jabba Chamberlain takes over. 
He will be facing Adam Rosales, the eighth appearance for Chamberlain this season. So he's been a worker so far. This is the 14th game of the year for the Yankees. Came in last night, Aces Lone has struck out Kevin Kuzmanoff. As Phil Hughes, a tremendous performance for Joe Girardi and the Yankees. And he does not have a chance to get a loss, but the A's have come back and do something. It'd be Chamberlain, of course, Mariano Rivera waiting on the wings of the ninth. I'm sure that one inning pitch last night's going to affect him, not going to affect him tonight. Chamberlain ended up striking out three in an inning and a third last night. He threw 18 pitches. Rosales got a fastball and pops a foul back. Joe Hughes pitching so great tonight, and well, the A's got to be thinking, just get him out of there. We don't care who comes in. Let Rivera, who cares? Yeah. And it is Chamberlain in the eighth inning. Shallow right, Randy Wynn comes in. And that's the second out. Jake Fox is going to hit for Eric Patterson. So Fox in the on deck circle, he's ready to go. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. For the athletics, batting for Eric Patterson. Number 50. Where Phil Hughes gave up the lone hit tonight. Eric Chavez hit it hard off his glove, off his forearm, chest, and up in the air. They couldn't find it. That's the only hit for the A's. Dave Island, the pitching coach, will jog out. Just a quick run through of the scouting report on Jake Fox. Eric Patterson was 0 for 2. Chamberlain will face Fox. Two on, two out, bottom of the eighth. Fox a homer and four RBIs. Not a bad spot for the guy right here. He's got very good power. Loves that fastball. And Chamberlain at some point in your at bat, he'll give you one. He throws hard. So it's nice to have. Guy with home run power on your bench. Jane Fox is indeed that. Chavez at second, Gross at first. There's the fastball, and Fox with a big swing and a miss. Now they challenge him, and Eric Fox can accept the challenge. Side two and one. It's the breaking ball, and Fox just got a piece of it. So two and two the count. A tight, tense ball game tonight here at the Coliseum in front of over 30,000. Slow pace last night, quick pace tonight. Pitchers throwing strikes. Zeros for both of them, except for the one inning, which the Yankees scored two on back to back triples. He's got to get a breaking ball here. I don't think he's going to challenge. There it is. And Fox does a nice job of protecting. And they get to see another pitch.
Chamberlain pretty deliberate on the mound. He kind of goes through the whole deal. Rubs the ball down. Straightens his cap a couple times. Now he's ready. There's a fastball base hit right field. Chavez comes around third. He will score. Gross to third, and the A's are on the board. Two to one. Another big pitch was the one that Jake Fox fouled the breaking ball two and two. Chamberlain came back with a fastball, and maybe Jake Fox was thinking he's going to get another one. He stayed back. And a great job taking a fastball opposite field. That is probably the best single, best hit that Jake Fox has had this year. A two out, two strike. They sit to right field. Shami, no reason to look back. Two outs. Now Rajay Davis <laughs> at first base to pinch run for Jake Fox. So that sets up perfectly as Rajay will pinch run, stand again, play left, where Fox pinched hit four. Eric Patterson. And there's the man, Mariano Rivera. The eighth is for Chamberlain. Cliff Pennington is the hitter. The tying run is at third. Rodriguez got a step onto the infield grass. Rajay can walk to second. I don't even think anybody's going to come. Just a bit low to Pennington. If he runs, they won't throw through. I don't believe that they take the chance of throwing through, even with Gross, who is not that fast. But you set, look at the infield right now. As spread as they are, they're looking for the out. And I don't think there'd be a throw. Rajay got a chance to see Chamberlain's move to first base. And with two outs, doesn't matter if contact is made, there's no chance of a double play with two outs. Let's talk to Ricky. Did he give him some advice to help him steal? Davis not going, and the pitch is bounced to Teixeira, and that's going to do it. A's going to run on two hits with a walk, so we head to the ninth. It's the Yankees two and the A's one. Sportsnet Bay Area, it's Sportsnet Central. Full baseball recaps this game and the Giants game in San Diego. Sharks playoff report. Get ready for game five tomorrow night. And Toby Garrett, running back for Stanford. 
Where will he go in the draft? The NFL draft starts tomorrow. The first round will be tomorrow. So we hope Toby Gerhardt gets a call tomorrow. Gabe Gross goes to left field, moves over to left field, and Jake Fox, the pinch hit, RBI single, he did his job. Rajay Davis is now in center field, so the outfield is Gross and left, Davis in center, Sweeney and right. And we will say it once again, and probably say it a few times this year, that we're going to try to tie or beat Mariano Rivera. Rosales from the seat of his pants, not in time. Good effort by Adam Rosales. But you want to keep it a one run game going in the bottom of the ninth inning. You do not want to get Mariano uh -huh. Rivera an extra run. Rosales about as far as it could go. He just could not come up with a ball from his backside, still with one hop almost got full side. Or here, Posada has his first hit tonight. Here's Granderson. There's a strike. It's a final in Seattle. The Mariners four and the Orioles one. Felix Hernandez a complete game. Six strikeouts. Mariners scored all four of their runs in the fourth inning. Jack Wilson had a three-run double. Barton spins around, fires to second. Time now for the Jeep drive of the game, and we'll give it to Eric Fox. A nice two-strike two -strike single to right field. Well, coming up, let enough chance to throw out Eric Chavez, so that makes it a one-run game. That's where we are right now. Two to one, top of the ninth. Jake Fox, a nice pitch hit. Probably a single. So Granderson now the runner at first. Randy Wynn swings and misses. So that win by the Mariners puts their record at nine and seven. They've won three in a row. So Seattle's starting to play better baseball. They struggled some when the A's saw them early in the year. Rivera. Randy Wynn dribbles it foul behind home plate. One and two. Wynn is 0 for 3 tonight, 0 for 9 on the season. Not going anywhere. The count evens at two and two. Angels three, Tigers two, bottom of the eighth in Anaheim. Jerry Blevins, an inning in the third. Left with a little bit of an injury. Did we get a report on him? I did not hear anything. Granderson goes, bounce to the mound. Ross took a look at second, but gets the sure out at first. Win is retired. To the Yankees, all you want is contact from Randy Wynn with the runner in motion, and unfortunately not able to get the lead runner. So put him in scoring position. Randy Wynn going after probably ball four. Great set up by Tyson Ross, but no chance with the speed of Granderson running on the pitch. So here's Gardner, so fast man at second, and a fast man in the batter's box. Drops low. Outfielder 
Rogers shallow for Gardner. Singled and walked and grounded out tonight. So he's been on base a couple times. Kirk Young wants to visit his young pitcher. Probably to say, you know who the guy in the on deck circle is? It's a future Hall of Famer. Pay him a lot of money. So if you're walking this guy who is at the plate, he's probably not a Hall of Famer. <laughs> a good little player, but not a Hall of Famer. Jeter might make Gardner's salary today. <laughs> well, he's probably making the minimum, which is what, 420? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that guy was never paid enough, Joe no, no. <laughs> What would he be making oh. today? Mr. Steinbrenner's partner. Good pitch there on 2 and 0. Oh. That is with face Rivera in the ninth inning. Martin Sweeney and Suzuki. Anybody gets on? Chavez. If anybody gets on again, Kuzminov. 3 and 1. A huge out to get. <laughs> there for a strike three and two. And Ross has so much movement on his pitches. It's a nice, easy 90 mile an hour two seam fastball with movement. Almost like a batting practice fastball. Almost like a screwball. That is a fair ball down the left field line just over the head of Kuzminov. Granderson will score, and that's a huge two out hit for Brett Gardner. He just kind of reached out and poked it over the head of Kuzminov. They left the pitch up, and he got away with the 3 1, left this one up, and it's a perfect pitch to do exactly what Gardner did. No chance for Kuzminov, and so Granderson in motion on the 3 2 to Randy Wynn. He gets in a scoring position, and we've seen it all too often. A two out hit. In this case, it gives Rivera an extra run. And I hope that's all. Jeter is one for four. We'll see if Gardner goes here. Okay, Jeter, four at bats tonight. Six pitches total. He's seen seven now, and this is fifth at bat. Sounds like he went in with a game plan. One and one to count. Jeter a single, and then three ground outs. One to third, two to short. To the backstop, and Gardner will end up at second, so he doesn't need to steal it. Just overthrew the ball too far outside. Suzuki wanted the pitch inside. That's a big reach, and he cannot pull the magical trick that he did in Seattle every game. Gardner in scoring position. Good pitch there, two and two. Guys like Jeter to share, guys who have been around a long time. I think they would prefer to face a veteran pitcher that they know what kind of stuff the guy has. Facing a rookie, they're not quite sure. To go. No, says the first base umpire, Ron Culpa. Wow. Take a look at that again. See how far his body carries him through the strike zone. 
That is a strike, folks. You're, you're, I don't care if the bat's on your shoulder. Look where the bat goes to the strike zone. That is a strike. That yeah. is a full swing strike. Yeah. That is unbelievable. But should we be surprised? Jeter checked the look again. No strike. He's going to call, gonna call the previous one. That's ridiculous. This one not as bad. <laughs> you know what? Almost as bad. That one was a strike yeah. too. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. He's behind the plate tomorrow. <laughs> so Jeter reaches on the walk, and here's Nick Johnson. Inside Johnson goes down to get out of the way. Gardner at second and Jeter at first. High fly ball toward left. Gabe Gross has it, and that's the inning. A run for the Yankees, so Mariano Rivera will try to protect a 3 to 1 New York lead. Ball is brought to you by Toyota. Say yes to amazing deals on your favorite Toyotas. See your local Toyota dealer today. Toyota, yes, by Xfinity, the next generation in home entertainment. Now available in the Bay Area and coming soon to the Central Valley. And by the Chevy Spring Event with great deals on award winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Yankees three, A's one, bottom of the ninth inning. Mariano Rivera comes on, he'll face Bart, Sweeney, and Suzuki. Eighth appearance for Rivera. He pitched last night, it was not a save opportunity. He ended up pitching the final inning. He came in in the ninth inning. Through ten pitches. So Rivera, the owner of 531 career saves. So he's ready, so is Derek Park. He's need base runners. And there's a strike. Miguel Cabrera of the Detroit Tigers just did a solo home run on Brian Fuentes down in, Anah down in Anaheim to tie the game in the top of the ninth inning. Lead off solo homer. On oh, two to Bart. 
Barton's chewing on Tom Haley in the home plate umpire a little bit. Off the plate, one and two. Now Derek Barton has too good of an eye, and you can understand why he would get upset a little bit if. Leaves a strike or a pitch is off the plate. It's called a strike. It's that one it jammed a little bit. It's a foul ball, so the count remains one and two. Barton a walk in the first, a strikeout in the fourth, and a foul out in the seventh. Remember, join us tomorrow, 12 o'clock A's pregame live, 12:30, the ball game. Dallas Braden, CC Sabathia, right here in Comcast Sportsnet, California. Again, down the right field line and foul. Sabathia will be ready to go, so will Dallas Braden. Two and two. So Barton doing a nice job battling Mariano Rivera. Foul ball. Well, Derek is very short and quick with his swing and his setup, and some tremendous eyes we've already seen. Playable Rodriguez into foul territory. He's got plenty of room and he makes the catch. One out here in the bottom of the ninth. So Ryan Sweeney steps in. Now ready. Right fielder. Number 21. Ryan Sweeney. Since 2008, the ERA on the road. Could put up a lot of graphics about Mariano <laughs> Rivera that would not even more impressive than postseason graphics yeah. and what little he has given up to the opposition. He's the all time postseason leader in saves with 39. <laughs> Somebody's got to get aboard to get the tying run to the plate. And Sweeney has done that. Drops a signal in the left center field. So Ryan Sweeney has his first hit. He's one for four. Now Rivera left that cutter up in the zone. And it's not a lot of mid 90s like we've seen in the past. That pitch up and probably the upper 80s. So Ryan Sweeney, good job going to the opposite field. Is there a Marco Scudero event in the house? Yeah. Kurt Suzuki steps in. Kurt is 0 for 3. Fun attempt, but he pulls the bat back. And that's one that's a pretty good idea. Not a bad idea at all to try to punt. Because he's need a couple of base runners. Alex Rodriguez is playing very deep at third. Sweeney with a short lead. 
just a bit low. Herrera thought maybe he got the strike. Now Italian said it was low. Chavez will be next. After Chavez, it's Kuzminov. See, there's that cutter that just gets off the sweet spot of the bat. Can't center. Yeah. No way. Just watch the movement. Suzuki starts at it, then watch it just take off right to the outside corner. Doesn't have to move a lot, just just enough to get down to the end of the bat. That's why he opened up, but better to try to just line the ball to the absolute field like Sweeney did to left center as a left hander. There, I want you to try to pull the, the cut fastball away from the right hand. That one of those that creeps to the middle of the plate a little bit. Another 2 2 to Suzuki, setting up inside, and it hits Kurt Suzuki. Posada tried to go inside. So the A's will take it. And Suzuki took that one like a man, and that was not easy to do because it was a hard hit ball oh, on the inside and off the left side of Kurt Suzuki. And it was not a cutter. If it was, it didn't break. Number three, Aaron Chavez. So the crowd is into it now. The A's with a chance here in the ninth. 14 career at bats for Chavez against Mariano Rivera. First pitch inside. I'd say the outfield, especially Granderson in center, Gardner in left. Gardner very shallow in left. And Granderson, and same for Randy Wynn. So if Chavi can. Hit a ball in the gap. This could be a tie game. And it, all they have to do is just hand to the gap and probably would go for the wall. Good swing by Eric Chavez, and he got a fastball that looked like it got a pretty good part of the middle of the plate. Foul one and two the count. It's amazing how a closer can just throw one pitch. I mean, how many pitchers can do that and be so successful? And he can frustrate some hitters. Lefties, righties, doesn't matter. Not as much lefties because of the way it pours in on their hands. One two. Just missed on the outside corner. Two and two. I was thinking about the one two to Javi. Or in the game, that's a strike three. Yeah. 
That's why I hesitate. Yep. Because Tom Hallion bring up a couple of guys on worse pitch than those. The Tigers have scored two in the top of the ninth down in Anaheim to take the lead. Four to three over the Angels, and the Tigers are still batting in that top of the ninth. All right, front is a blown save. Chance for a blown save and a loss. Yeah. Right now the A's just trying to get back in the game. 2-2. Two -two. Bounced to the mound. Rivera goes to second, and Jeter makes the play there. A dangerous play by Rivera, yeah. but a smart play. Keeps the tying run out of scoring position. Yeah, no chance for a double play once he jumped and caught the ball. Shabby tried to pull the outside pitch. He just wanted to make sure. Good throw to second. And get the force out there. And that's a force out for the Yankees at second, but more importantly, like you said, to keep the second run out of score position. And there's your extra run at the top of the inning. The Yankees were able to get. Two outs. Here's Kuzminov. Kuzminov. Fouls it straight back. Tough night for the A's third baseman. He is struck out swinging three times. Sweeney at third. Chavez at first. Swing and a miss. 0 oh 2. Because he's just pulling off the pitches. That one he pulled off too much. Watch the front side. Rivera's ready. So is Kuzminov. The 0-2 pitch. Shallow center, Granderson coming in. He's going to get there. He makes the catch, and that's the ball game. So Mariano Rivera comes in. He gets career save number 532. The A's make him work a little bit, and a couple of runners on in the ninth, but they do not score. So behind a terrific pitching performance from Phil Hughes, who took a no hitter into the eighth inning, the Yankees make it two in a row over the A's. Final score tonight, three to one. So Hughes. Gets the win. Oh boy. And the loss goes to Ben Sheets, who pitched six innings for the A's. Yankees win it 3 1. That's your final. Don't go away. A's postgame live with Minibach, Carney Lansford, and Michael Urban starts right now.